Testing, one, two, testing. The 1980s, um, they, they always refer to it as the decade of excess. Everybody, you know, had uh, things in excess. There was a show uh, with Robin Leach called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. It profiled a bunch of people um, that um, were living high, um, the high life. See, in the 70s, everybody was happy that they um, survived the nuclear war that they were all expecting. But in the 80s, um, it was after that. Culturally speaking, it was about uh, a, a, a drastic change from the 1970s. 70s was a time of confusion after the 1960s and high inflation, poor economy. In the 1980s, uh, there was more of a return to a normal American lifestyles. Um, uh, and uh, the economy improved a lot and people had a chance to be uh, successful. The 1980s for me was about growing up. I was in elementary school, the middle school, and high school. The world was always changing around us as we got older. It was a lot of fun. And let's see, there was the Challenger explosion, the election of Ronald Reagan, um, the wall coming down in <clears throat> communist Europe. Those are the main things I remember. I do remember in the very late 80s, probably like 89 or so, I saw somebody at a restaurant. I saw a woman, a well-dressed businesswoman, carrying a briefcase that had a phone sticking out of it. And it was like the earliest cell phone. And I thought, this is, that looks so stupid. That'll never take off because it looks so idiotic. I couldn't believe she was standing there in a restaurant talking on the phone. But for me personally, I had um, I had a Nintendo that came out in 1985. Um, I had a Game Boy, and I want to say that was like maybe 89, black and white, um, little portable uh, handheld game, which was pretty awesome. And then we used to have these um, these uh, mini arcade games that we would play, like Pac-Man on. So yeah. We had um, Walkman, <laughs> so we had our cassette tape, and we could listen to music that way, not just records. You could walk around with the music. Um, cell phones came out in the 80s, but I did not have a cell phone. Home computers came out in the 80s. We did not have a home computer. I, I, I think after the 1970s and the 1960s, the 1980s was a little bit smoother, to be honest with you because there was so much drugs and chaos and, you know, all that stuff happening in the 70s and stuff. As I remember uh, Michael Jackson moonwalking at the 25th anniversary of Motown for the very first time on stage. I was a teenager in the 80s, so, um, I'm very nostalgic for that time uh, because everything was new and fun. Okay, for fashion, um, Madonna was very important. Madonna was like, like even I wore um, rubber, black rubber bracelets after Madonna wore them. A Do lot of people dressed like Madonna. Um, I remember that pretty vividly because she would wear a lot of lace and uh, that kind of thing and gloves and Cyndi Lauper was a big, per uh, big personality at that time. <laughs> I would say that people were very um, into the exact same fashion and they got their sense of fashion from whatever the designers of the day were, like Gloria Vanderbilt, 
um, and it was just kind of what was in the stores. <laughs> um, and also celebrities. It was the fashion in the 80s mostly came from looking in the magazines and what people who were famous were wearing, which is not too different from today. Um, I remember shoulder pads. I remember bright colors. There were times where we wore neon. There were funny things like jams, big bows in the hair, lots of jewelry. Probably came from Madonna. Like prep preppy. was in then, preppy was in. So these different plaids mm -hmm. and um, in the, <laughs> this was funny, but in, in a plaid outfit like pants or shorts or a jacket, there'd always be one little color thread that kind of stood out. Mm -hmm. And if you could find it and match that up with something, people would be like, now why do you have that pink on with the burgundy plaid? And you say, look right here, you see that little, oh, there's a thread of pink, you found it. That was so crazy. Fashion uh, for us was very DIY and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to how a lot of people dress today with like ripped jeans and, you know, we made our own t-shirts and printed our own stuff and that's what we were into. Guys, um, depending on where you're from, uh, there was a movie called Breakin' and Breakin' 2, Electric Boogaloo. Um, you would see some, some fashion maybe come out of there. Music of the 1980s was very, it was a time where music entered a lot of different genres and a lot of different genres became very important. I would say that there were a couple of songs, I probably don't have one. One would be the Run DMC and Aerosmith. <laughs> There was a lot of variety in music. That's when music really became, I think, um, in the rock genre, uh, there was this uh, emerging um, uh, genre of uh, alternative rock, like REM and bands like that, that were more freewheeling, didn't um, necessarily uh, follow the same track that a lot of bands did in the 1970s and 60s. Um, for hip hop heads, uh, there was a song called Eric B is President, came out in 1986. That was revolutionary. Um, a lot of people will remember uh, Walk This Way by Run DMC because that was a big crossover thing. But for true hip hop people, uh, 1986, uh, Eric B and Rakim, that, the, he had a new way of rhyming and putting things together. Um, uh, using uh, entendres, it was it was, uh, it was it was revolutionary. The, the hip hop really took off in the '80s. Maybe not the way you guys think about it, but like the way that my generation thinks about it. You know, uh, Run DMC and <laughs> the Fat Boys, Public Enemy. Um, in terms of pop, I mean, probably, I mean, the biggest song to me was Beat It, uh, Michael Jackson. I think that that was like quintessential mid 80s. I 
think uh, Michael Jackson, along with some other artists like Madonna, were the first to really introduce um, this, like, dancing along with music. So, um, in their videos, you know, part of their um, performance included a lot of dancing, which had not been um, done previously. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So I have kind of a unique perspective on this because MTV was originally in New York City. So cable, cable was brand new at the time. Not every cable provider would would supply MTV as a channel because they didn't believe in it because they were th they thought hey it's this channel that just plays music obviously MTV does not play music anymore um, or they play very little music but um, so not everybody had that channel so they had a campaign that was like I want my MTV and they just kept getting all of these different celebrities and and uh, rock artists and uh, hip hop artists or whatever. <laughs> my MTV. I want my MTV. Call your cable company and say I want my MTV. Um, the debut of MTV was huge in the 80s. That was that was a defining feature of the 80s because um, because there had been nothing like that before. Like if you want to see, they, I mean, there were bands that sold millions of records and nobody knew what they looked like. Like Pink Floyd, nobody knew what Pink Floyd looked like. But after the um, after the video era started, um, there, there was a much more direct way of of, of marketing a, a, a group and being able to see what they looked like. And TV was a big change. Um, that was kind of the onset of cable TV, so you have more options in what you can watch. And then having music on TV and videos, a very new process that was happening. Um, so it did change. How people listen to music and look at music. The other thing I really remember about MTV, I was a big wrestling fan in the 80s with Hulk Hogan and Rowdy Roddy Piper and Mr. T and Paul Orndorff and all these guys. And they had the war to settle the score, which actually kicked off the first WrestleMania. And I remember that match was on MTV. So it was like, first of all, it was wrestling, which I love. And it was on MTV, which was like unheard of at the time. They, they broadcast this live uh, wrestling show from Madison Square Garden. So um, that's what I remember about MTV. What do you want for breakfast? Cereal. Cereal what? Cereal and bananas. Cereal, bananas, what? Cereal, bananas, and milk. <laughs> Cereal, bananas, milk. What? In a bowl. <laughs> Cereal, bananas, milk in a bowl. What? Cereal, bananas. <laughs> Please. In the 80s, there was um, a time when a lot of the shows were trying to bring new things to the screen. For example, The Cosby Show. The Cosby Show had um, the, um, the mother in that show. She was a professional, you know, and that was um, different than earlier years when you had, like, the mother was always the homemaker and was always, you know, they're completely made up with the little apron on in the kitchen and stuff. On um, the Cosby Show, that was an example of something totally different. Television was not diverse in the 80s. It was not diverse at all. Um, you know, Michael Jackson and Prince were, were like the rare um, black artists that you would see on MTV. I mean, we had the Cosby Show. That, was, that made us believe that television was diverse. Um, because the Cosby Show came out in around 1984, um, but you know, 80s was really the time for situational comedy with a live studio audience from Growing Pains to 
Who's the Boss and um, all these family sitcoms, family ties. Um, a lot of those characters were all white and um, every now and then they might have the occasional black friend. But really the Cosby show was the, was the first show that really uh, highlighted a black family. Television was not very diverse in the 80s. Um, there were certain TV shows that were, uh, you know, a little bit more diverse, like the Jeffersons, um, but overall not very diverse at all. The player of the year from Indiana State and the magic man from East Lansing, Urban Johnson. The rivalry between um, Larry Bird uh, of the Celtics and uh, Magic Johnson for the uh, uh, LA, for the Lakers, uh, they were both just amazingly great players in their own rights, had very different styles. Um, but they respect they they were very competitive with each other, but they respected each other tremendously And it was always fun to watch that on the uh, on the basketball court so magic Was so charismatic bird not as much, but it was this white guy would just game and He would just trash talk and he would bird was the kind of player that would go whisper in the guy's ear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sidestep to the right, and then I'm gonna shoot a three pointer in your face. And then he would go and do it. Like he would. That was the kind of player that Larry Bird was. Um, and for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of black people, they they really kind of gravitated more towards Magic because you know he was a he was a black player and he was awesome. Um, but uh, you know they they really. Um, single-handedly captivated everybody they are the single reason why the nba finals went from a tape delay like they would literally broadcast the nba finals their world championships on a tape delay the next day or later that night magic and bird made it prime time viewing they made it move it up into live programming which had not been done before because of their because their rivalry spanned from college and then went into the pros I remember the Olympics in the 80s. I, we had people, women like Mary Lou Retton and Florence Griffith Joyner. We called her Flojo. Um, she was a track star. Mary Lou Retton did gymnastics. Um, it was a great time for women um, to show their athletic abilities. VHS came out, so we started having a way to watch movies at home that we were choosing and not what was being shown on TV. The movies of the 80s were timeless, classic, um, iconic. There were movies like Star Wars. Um, Indiana Jones. Listen to your life, would you say? I'm a man without so the technology wasn't the same back then as it is now, but I still think that the movies that we watched as kids in the 80s still, you know, people still watch them today. When you think of the 80s, what movies come to mind? 16 Candles, 
Uh, I would say um, 48 Hours uh, was one movie that kind of defined the 80s and um, you know it was all about moving at a faster pace in modern uh, society. 80s movies? Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I am not telling you to see Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I'm not suggesting that. It just happens to be my favorite 80s movie. And you've seen, y'all have seen the um, Checkered Vans? Checkered yeah. Vans. Yeah, you, you know Checkered Vans. Uh, those were invented for that movie. They became famous for the main character of that movie. It's a situation that's out of the control of the government here or of the international voluntary agencies. Nuclear accident in the Soviet Union, and the Soviets have admitted that it happened. The Soviet version is this. Mystery disease known as the gay plague has become an epidemic unprecedented in the history of American medicine. That today from the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta, topping the list of likely victims are male homosexuals who have many partners and drug users who inject themselves with needles. Medical experts say the disease kills four out of every ten people it strikes and that it threatens to explode in the nation's cities. At the time, Anybody who contracted HIV, um, we just knew that that was, that was a death sentence, basically. You're going to die. We thought, oh no, like, what is this thing? Um, because it, AIDS had been around from probably early 80s, maybe 1980, 81, but it really wasn't until that 85 and Rock Hudson was diagnosed that it became like this big, you know, uh, now we had this widespread knowledge of it. The AIDS epidemic, I remember uh, having a lot of fear around HIV and AIDS, um, not knowing how it was transmitted, not knowing how easy it would be to catch it. Well, I mean, I certainly remember when it started, and um, I mean, it was pretty scary. It was really, I mean, not really the first time that there were sexually transmitted diseases, but certainly um, the first time that there was a sexually transmitted disease that was that did not have a cure and was fatal. We need your support again. Drugs are menacing our society. They're threatening our values and undercutting our institutions. They're killing our children. Crack. It's going nationwide, especially among the young. A drug so pure and so strong, it might just as well be called crack of doom. I grew up in New York City, and I remember when it... Um, exploded, I guess, because I literally grew up in New York City and I was so young. I remember being super young and you could see crack vials everywhere. Like they were, they looked like little plastic, um, they looked like pencil eraser tips, and, mm -hmm. and but they were made out of plastic. And I guess the crack was inside those little plastic tips and they were just strewn across the ground. And then crack became sort of the poor man's cocaine um, in the mid 80s, by the mid 80s, and uh, of course, it was a lot deadlier and a lot more addictive um, and uh, more intense. If Nancy Reagan, who had this big, like, say no to drugs campaign, um, I remember her appearing on an episode of Different Strokes, and I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. First Lady is on Different Strokes. Different Strokes was like a, another situational comedy back in the day, family comedy.
tragically, I remember the Challenger blowing up uh, in 1986. I'm, I'm from New York City, and uh, we had a snow day that day, so uh, we all stayed home. During the Challenger, I think it was my first year doing student teaching. So I remember that we actually did not have school that day. It was the teacher work day, so I was at home by myself. I was, um, I was a freshman in college um, in the dorm room where we saw uh, the explosion on TV. We were watching it, the kids and I, and somebody was in the room evaluating me and ex exploded. And, um, and I just had to collect myself and keep moving because I was being evaluated. We all stayed home to watch uh, this monumental um, uh, uh, um, launch, and uh, they had a teacher on board. was one of the was one of the astronauts, and and tragically, um, the, the the shuttle went up and uh, exploded shortly thereafter. So like what was your slang like your phrases I can <laughs> slang um again depends on who you are um but i remember rad was a big thing rad and tubular those were not for me um i guess dope when something was good which is maybe not the best thing because it's actually referring to like a drug but uh dope so i think the main ones i remember in the 80s are the valley girl face. so as if <laughs> duh like 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 i remember rad and totally awesome fresh i think even dope that came around in the late 80s, I think. Dude. <laughs> the word dude. D-U-D-E. Use that a lot. Fresh was a good one. Mid 80s. Oh, that, they would say, oh man, that's fresh. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, I'm so good. <laughs>